we have our quorum. We can call the meeting to order. Uh, the minutes we will table. I did talk to uh, Sonia about that yesterday and she's in progress. Um, Melissa spoke to me this morning. She had a uh, kind of an emergency go to work thing. That storm we had yesterday, she wasn't able to uh, plant in her, uh, her grant evidently and cannot meet the, make the meeting. She was on the agenda and she did mail us, or I received it, I assume everyone did. She, uh, a report, uh, which I would like to table uh, until our next meeting, if uh, we could take that, take that up when uh, Melissa uh, comes back. With that said, we are short-handed for a uh, clerk. And uh, Nick, I, I, uh, I'd like to uh, ask you today, just uh, on a temporary basis, uh, if you could act as our, as our clerk for the meeting. I can. You can? Yes. Great. Did you send my email back to you, Nick? Uh, yeah, I did. I kind of got involved in a couple things and it was kind of so close to the meeting that I was just like, okay, let me yeah. pause this for right <laughs> now. And I was going to talk to Jim about whether I was going to be a secretary or whether I was being a clerk. And then I was like, okay, we'll figure this out. So, yeah, it's really strange. There's no like definition anywhere from the state or other places I've seen that defines like the actual role of the the, the clerk. Um, so I, I, as far as I know, like uh, Ryan Curley is the clerk for the select board and he just kind of does the mail and stuff, but I can definitely search around and see, and maybe Jim, if you have other ideas as to what you want Nick to do um, as the clerk, but um, it's a pretty easy task. Yeah. Uh, the, the biggest thing I had was if I'm required to record the meetings, what am I supposed to do with that? And how do I, like, I don't know how to do that. I'm not technically so, savvy i can do things once i know how to do them but like if i'm required to do that that's something that i'm like not sure about so no nope. so okay. I, as as the host of the meeting it's i have already started recording it so i do all that on my end so none of the zoom tech stuff you have to worry about it's really just the the, the mail and whatever other clerk duties may be assigned okay i did think um the new word for secretary of, of committees was clerk. Uh, no. <laughs> that's, there, that's what I thought. <laughs> so there's two, I guess it really depends on how you want to view it in your committee. Um, the select board is really the only one who I know of that has a formal clerk um, and I'm their recording secretary. I'm their paid staff secretary, but the secretary does the minutes and stuff and the clerk is kind of just the one who deals with making sure all the correspondence is sent to everybody and you all are aware of any mail that has come in or things like that. Right. The other committee that I, I serve on the NREB, I think they have, a, I think they have a clerk and I think that person records the minutes. John, do you have a secretary in, and uh, or? No, and we have always operated where I, where I actually take the minutes and my, my system is that, Within 24 hours of a meeting, I make notes and send them around to everybody for any immediate corrections because I think if you if you wait until the, the next meeting, everyone has forgotten what happened at the first meeting. But then they have the once I get some comments back, they have to go on to the agenda of the next meeting and be approved, and that's when I that's when I uh, send them to Jennifer Congal for filing. I was trying to avoid, uh, as the chair, doing that. And, uh, and if that's the wishes of this committee, uh, and I, 
I, I think uh, what, I like the way it's done in NRAB. I like the way uh, I like that procedure. I just thought someone else was going to do it, but uh, whatever works. I think it, there's lots of different I, ways. I will. Um, from my recollection, and again, if it doesn't work out, you can get, you can, uh, we'll do it another way. I will take the responsibility of the secretary type thing. Uh, unless, uh, Nick, you wanted to record the minutes, then, then that would be great. Uh, it's, it's up, tell you what, it's up to you. Well, you I mean, I'll give it a shot. I mean, I don't have, like I said, when we talked on the phone, I, yeah. and John, I will explain this to you also. I'm a very, information oriented guy if i know what i'm doing then or if somebody has said this is how you do it even if i haven't done it it's like oh okay i just got to follow the steps that's fine so when i do something new that i don't know how i'm doing i'm like I, what am i supposed to do so that's just where i come in so yeah i mean i wrote down already wrote down the date the time the committee i got the attendance going I have, you know, I wrote down the table of the minutes, we'll table the minutes of the Melissa report. So I'll take some brief notes of the meeting and I will try to get them out. Uh, you know, if we do a meeting on Thursday, I'll try to get everything done on the weekend, get it back out and we'll see where it goes. If that is acceptable to you guys, then I'll keep doing it. And Absolutely, 100%. So we'll make a new title for you if you, uh, if this goes well. Can I put it on my card? You can do that. <laughs> Put it on your resume. There you go. Okay. I think we got that squared away. Um, the agenda here. Now, this is, uh, I thought, would be a brief, uh, not, no, I won't say brief, but we want to limit this primarily to uh, our Lieutenant Island uh, site visit and the issues. I did want to clarify one more issue regarding um, a general overall procedure. Uh, we haven't received any so far, and I, I really uh, I think this is the time to do it. And uh, I don't know if this has to be a motion or anything, but uh, my thoughts are, if someone wants our services, in other words, if somebody has an issue uh, concerning access, uh, and it is covered, uh, they think it's covered in our jurisdiction, and they want our opinion, or help, or whatever, uh, the way that I would prefer to work it, uh, I would prefer to, to uh, and they contact any one of us, uh, to refer them to the chair and a written request to be placed on our uh, agenda. Uh, a simple thing is that. What I want, what I do want to avoid is every committee in town that might have an issue on access uh, sends us a memo saying, would you attend our meeting uh, and give us an opinion of. Uh, that's not the way this committee is going to, is working. Uh, if someone has issues that their committee needs clarified, then they would bring it in front of the committee and would get on the agenda. Sounds like a small item, but it would save a lot of uh, headaches as far as us attending every time someone has a problem with access. Uh, and it also uh, stop any hard feelings that if we said you, we really don't wanna show up at your meeting uh, and give you an opinion on, on that. Um, that's something that is, we sh once we start doing these things, and we are going to start today, that we should do about it with a method. The only method I know is, uh, is what I've taught people uh, all through teaching, is the scientific method. We come up, we've got to first identify that problem, and it's going to be brought to us, to our committee, uh, and will be placed on an agenda. Any discussion on or problems with doing it that way? I think that's a good idea, Jim. I read uh, Melissa's email. 
about her having listened down the Open Space Committee and the this uh, issue about the access over at the boathouse is more complicated than I knew. I haven't paid close attention for a month or so. So I think it'd be, my reaction was I was going to go talk to Bruce and try to get some education, but maybe it would be better if I delegated that to you and to go to Bruce and say, we're happy to, you know, to, to talk about your issue and give us our opinion, but you've got to give us the background because most of us don't um, have the facts at hand. Well, he would, if, if they want our, if they truly do want us to get involved, then that would, they would, for example, if we have a problem, we're trying to come up with access and we need the opinion of the CONSCOM, then we would go to their committee meeting and they would take up, take it up as a committee. Um, and, and that's, I would expect uh, Bruce, if he wants us to send us a, a, uh, a request to be placed on our agenda. And that's the better, way I would better prefer idea to do just... business. Better idea, even more than him just sending us some information, is that he should participate in the next meeting. He should be on the agenda. If he, if they want to, yes. And if if we're at a point where we can put him on the agenda, I assume we will. But right now we're dealing with one issue, and I don't know what their timetable is. And the I, I was officially never notified of really anything. Uh, and we have not discussed, I really don't want to discuss, uh, I want to table that discussion that we will on I the think, notes from Melissa. I think Bruce would be glad to show up, so. Sure. But it isn't just that committee, it's going to be any committee. No, I, I understand the broad point, yeah. Okay. Any other problem or discussion on that? It's just, I think, a good way for us to do business. Uh, if we don't come up with a, a sound way of handling situations, uh, it, it places us all over the place. And uh, All right, with that said, the next order of business is our Lieutenant Island. We'll tell the committee that uh, I did meet with Melissa Lowe, the uh, director of the Gulf Fleet, Committee or not committee? Why am I miss? Excuse me, I was looking for some notes and I can't find my. Excuse me one second. Melissa Law, the uh, director of the Autobahn. And we had a great meeting. We met at the pothole. I called it the hole uh, in my memo to, to Melissa. And she said, oh, we'll meet at the uh, donut shop. That's what we call it in East here. So I want to make sure I did not refer to it as the hole. All right, our pothole, uh, she is in agreement. That should be filled. It goes uh, with the principles of the Autobahn uh, to make uh, their facilities and uh, presumably they own the road accessible. Uh, so that will take time. It, there are studies that have to be done. People from off Cape has to come look at the pothole. Uh, it's, it's a non-issue as far as I'm concerned. And uh, we talked about briefly uh, the issues that occurred during the Pond and Coastal uh, Committee meetings that we had agreed on on emergency gates being placed wherever stone barriers were placed, there are two. And she said, that's no issue, that we, we will put in uh, the gates and how uh, they'll be put in. Uh, I talked to the fire chief. He requested the gates uh, be not locked because uh, they, have a, a, a key, a set of keys that's unbelievable. It just doesn't work. If they have to get in there, uh, they cut the lock anyways. So he says, I don't need a lock on it. 
but it should be such that in an emergency, a private citizen might be able to break it down for safety. Um, he said, when you guys decide on what you're going to do and when it goes up, I'll come out and look at it. And he asked me, do you think there's an issue? And I said, no. So I don't consider that we have any issue with the Autobahn on any of those three topics. Now, I, now Jim. Yes. Now you said they did, they agreed to do the gates. Now, was that at all? I mean, because I know we went to several different locations when we yeah. were out there. Um, is that include like the ones over by the northwest corner there that we were talking about where the boathouse is on the way back? Yes, yes. That includes those also? Yeah, that's the only, they have stone barriers on that road they have a, and the southwest corner. Yeah, because they have at both ends on that road, I think, right? On the north corner, on the, uh, the on old the Lieutenant corner. Island Road? Yes. Yes, they yeah. have a gate on one end. I don't know if it's a gate. They have a, a wooden structure on one then, end, okay. the walls on the other. And then on they the get, northern side, they have the rocks, but also where we were on the south side. Okay, so I just want to make My sure. guess is they will probably, after we talk about it, uh, probably put a gate on both sides. That's what I'm thinking. I don't, that is not something we agreed to, but I don't think it's an issue at all. In fact, I would like uh, a motion that you delegate the chair to continue with discussions with uh, Melissa and just uh, monitoring the progress uh, of that project. I'm, I just want to be sure I'm clear, Jim, on uh, which project this motion um, covers. Because my conversations with Melissa are that uh, any removal of the, the stone barrier on the south side at the southwest corner is not likely to happen. And I don't is, know if, if, the if, south that's, side, what, John, if, if that's what you understood as well. Absolutely. Okay. The south side, though, already has two wooden posts and the I think it's a, a that big plank bolted to the two wooden bolts, a two wooden posts. Yeah. That would be taken out. The rocks may not be moved. I don't know. That's uh, we didn't talk about moving rocks. I don't. I don't believe she is either. But the gate is already there. Only it's not a gate. It's yeah. two wooden posts with bolted, a bolted situation. That's not a gate. What I understood from Melissa is that um, any f further driving on Audubon owned beach or flats runs in contradiction to a mass Audubon policy. And so she, her, my understanding is her hands were tied uh, in that respect. I think she's talking, uh, and I think that discussion is about a gate uh, giving access to the beach. Yeah. No, this is the gate. This would give access to an emergency vehicle, uh, which could go up on the beach. But this is the, be the beginning of the parking lot. Did you, when we were there out on the site visit, you saw those two posts? Okay, I see what you're saying now. All right, fair enough. Different conversation. All right. Okay. And she did indicate in her exact words, because I did take notes after the meeting, uh, were that if, a, if it would make people happy or safer uh, with removing uh, a rock or two on the original old uh, Lieutenant Island Road, uh, so be it, we'll put a gate there. That's in the north part of the island. Yeah. Okay, uh, we square on that? Still, uh, still giving, ac giving emergency access is fine. That's different from giving permission 
to, to use the access on a regular basis for either beach access or shell fishing access. None of that is, is in play. This is strictly emergency. Okay. Only emergency. Then we're all set. Okay. okay. Uh, and again, for people that are new on the committee, if I ask for a, and again, I did, I am going to request that uh, anyone who misses a meeting, the luxury of having this on Zoom, is that they can view the, view the, uh, the meeting itself, that uh, should be required, I'm going to ask them, I want to say you're required, I'm going to ask them to watch the meeting that you make. So whatever words I say aren't just for the people here, but the people that are going to be watching it. Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, John, on my love of trees and water. If I call for a motion, all someone in the, all one of our members must or uh, could say is so moved and we don't have to repeat the motion. That's fine, but I've forgotten what the motion was. So could you repeat I, I would like, I would like the committee to, uh, I would like a motion be made that the chair continue uh, with discussions with Melissa Lowe uh, regarding the uh, the three issues that I just spoke about. The, so moved. The whole second. Okay, here a second. Second. All in favor. Uh, discussion. Further discussion. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Three zero motion carried. Okay, the Lieutenant Island, I will say we had a full committee, which was nice. And the committee viewed uh, three maps, which I did provide. If the public is there, I have no idea. I didn't check who's there, who's not there. The, uh, we made the visit and viewed the entrance to Lieutenant Island, the old road as well as Way 100, the offshoot to Way 100. Uh, while we were there, we talked about, and two of us, I did walk uh, the area up in the, uh, the conservation area that abuts it. Uh, we reviewed that. We did make a quick stop at the uh, boathouse and then went to the major issue, which is Southwest Corner. Now, in any of these, uh, whenever we have any of these issues, our first job is to decide whether or not we want to discuss it, whether it falls under our jurisdiction or charge. And to remember, just to remind us, we're talking about maintaining, reestablishing, or improving the public rights of access to town landings, rights of way, or other means of public access within the town of Wellfleet. I would, the chair would entertain a motion uh, that the Southwest corner, uh, particularly Lot 172, now owned by the Autobahn, uh, does indeed warrant uh, our uh, study. So moved. Second discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we visited that site. Um, the, this is very hard to discuss. I really wish we were sitting around a table talking, but the more, the more we get to know each other, this gets a little easier. Although for some reason now, I don't, Nick, I don't see you on my screen. What did I do wrong? Uh, you must have done something. I didn't do anything. Now I see you, but now I don't see are you on myself. speaker? Are you on speaker or gallery view? 
How do I find that out? And thank you, Courtney, for hanging around. <laughs> yeah, in the top right corner, in the top right corner of your screen, there should be a little box that um, it should say gallery view. Ah, okay. There you are. <laughs> okay. And now I see Helen is, is here. Okay. All right. Now, I'll open this up for discussion. We saw uh, what questions do you have? I have walked every, every foot of those lots that belong to the town. 183 is pretty much gone through erosion at the tip. I'm referring now to the map. Uh, I don't, we don't have a number, but the, the map with the southwest corner in it with the three lots by the town, 171, 170, and 182, 159 being that's that lot owned by a private party. John, what do you have to say about those lots or whatever, or the whole thing up there? Anything? Well, what, what I was going to talk about is um, that I'm, I met yesterday also with Melissa, but we met with Bill Huss. And Bill Huss is one of the two officers of the Lieutenant Island uh, Homeowners Association. Um, learned a, a couple of in, interesting things. That's um, they don't have any particular authority. They don't own any of the roads. It's, uh, it's an association of getting people together, talk about issues, and then try to find uh, common solutions. But they, um, the reason I sort of emphasize this is I'm uh, on a homeowners association in a different part of town, and we actually own the road. This home, this own homeowners association does not own the road. It doesn't have any uh, any ownership. Uh, Bill was very concerned about the parking issue, and in this in this in the summer season, people parking um, along the road on the marsh through the marsh. Um, he was uh, he he asked for our help to see if we could find a solution uh, uh, to that problem. Um, he did a little brainstorming for us. He said, well, maybe we could set up a shuttle service from the bridge to the, to the <laughs> um, uh, he, he, he did appreciate that um, the um, town of Wellfleet, be, because there were no town ownership of the, the, the ways, there, there's no, opportunity for the town police to do any enforcement that we had to find uh, our own procedure. So he's very supportive. Um, I get the sense pretty desperate and hoping that we could, we could help. Hi, Jim. Jim, it's Helen. Hi, Wilson. Helen. Yes. Hi there. Um, uh, may I just speak to something John said? John, homeowners don't, homeowner associations or even neighborhood associations don't own ways and subdivisions. However, all ways and subdivisions are private roads. And my memory of the issues surrounding this access, and I'm glad that your committee is looking into it, have to do with, as I told Jim in a phone conversation the other day, the fact that a stitch of the road that goes to the left right after you come over the bridge, right, is part of the subdivision. In other words, it's a private road. And the people in the subdivision are, you know, I go to their meetings when I'm on the select board, and I went to the last one, and they seemed good-hearted about it. I'm glad Bill Huss was there the other day, because he is one of the officers. But one of the things I hope this committee clarifies is 
which part of that road that goes to the left and arrives at the beach is within the subdivision. In other words, is a private road. The, the Audubon, I believe, was not part of that original subdivision. I may be wrong about that. But the subdivision facing the water, facing the bay, right, facing the beach, looking west, the area to the right is all a subdivision. And I think that some of that road that runs along between the marsh and those houses is part of it. So you need to know that, right? Because legally that could be blocked off. Nobody wants to do that. It's all workable, but that needs to be very clearly established. And John, you understand what I'm saying here. It isn't that a homeowners association can own a road. It's that all the people in the subdivision have access to a private road in a subdivision, but they can also get together and decide not to give it to other people, which nobody wants to do. And that happened, Nick, you know, with Omaha Road way back. That's also in the subdivision. And Dorothy Sterling did a workaround where she had people who were shellfishing and using Omaha Road as her guests. In other words, if I live in a subdivision, you live, by the way, or your father and mother live in a subdivision. And I think Ultra Crescent Road is a old town way and it's not part of a subdivision. I'm not clear about that, but it, it applies. Anyway, thank you for letting me speak. And it's an important distinction and you guys will figure it out. Thank you. Helen, while, while you're there. Yeah. Um, I will ask to you a question which I had discussed with, with Jim. Uh, figuring out the ownership of who owns what uh, usually needs some help from council. Uh, the first thing you do is you look at, you, any one of you can call up the registry of deeds. You don't need council to do that. And get the registered plan for the subdivisions on Lieutenant Island. It's a snap. Okay. And by the way, Nancy Vale already has a lot of that and can help you with that. So you don't need counsel to do that. You may need counsel to give you subsequent advice, but for all these different places where there's public access, if it's anywhere near a subdivision, right, where you have to go through a subdivision, all you have to do is ask Nancy if she can access a subdivision plan. By the way, I just did that with her for, uh, what the registry has for the subdivision that included the Hedilta property that the town bought last spring. Right. It was part of this larger piece of land and was subdivided off and was part of the subdivision. So anyway, we're not there yet, but you don't need counsel for that. You need to find out what the original subdivision looked like. And if that way is in it, that is a private road. And then you can go to town council. Maybe I should just, in my spare time, that's a joke, do it for you. You know, it's pretty easy. I already did it for the Delta and the subdivision over there. So anyway, thank you. Well, thank you for the clarification, Helen. Thank you. And you know, uh, we, we came to the discussion. I was gonna ask the committee uh, how we wanted to handle guests with discussions. Do we wanna have a separate Caught at the end, or do we want to allow the guests to get involved in the discussions? Now we allowed Helen to get involved with our discussion. I don't particularly have a problem with that. I kind of enjoy, I like that because I learned something about something we're going to be talking about. Um, does anyone else have any feelings towards that? Uh, that uh, I mean, what I our method should be. I don't want to, I want to make sure everybody says what's on how they're feeling. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to allow guests to speak, in my mind, you, 
you kind of have to allow them to do it as we're talking because if we, you know, if she pops in and you know, if we wait to talk to Helen for another 20 minutes, then we're not talking about that. And then we're going back to what the other person's talking about. So I think in an effort to keep things moving on the subject that they're on, if we're going to allow guests, then they should be talking while we're, you know, ask them to only talk about the subject we're talking about at that time. That then would be my job to keep them on the subject. Yes. Rather than yeah, and I think that would be fine with me. I don't have a problem with that. Good. John, do you have yeah. a problem with that? No, no, that's, yeah. that's appropriate. Okay. Um, I got it. I did get a little confused again. I live in a subdivision. Um, we have a private road. I thought it's private. Um, but I own the road along with the 50 other people in here, but it's registered. You must be registered to own the road. That's, that's what I understand. And Jerry Parent uh, said, Jim, this is the third time you've asked me about this. And I said, well, I'm gonna use it again. So at my understanding of Lieutenant Island, he, and he took me through what out my living Great Woods Field are, my deed goes right up to the road, but all the people in my development own the road. That's my understanding because Jerry registered it and we must pay dues uh, or it'll be assessed sooner or later if we sell the property or whatever, our estate. That's not true of Lieutenant Island. As far as I'm, as far as I know, Helen's got her May hand I? up. So, could you add to that, Helen? Yes. So, um, first of all, under state law, in Mass General Law, every subdivision has the same status and is comes under the same laws and regulations as if it had been created since the Subdivision Control Act. In other words, you know, uh, all those little tiny lots over where Berta Brunich lives, you know, off All Wharf Road and stuff. Those were, that was a subdivision that was created long before the Subdivision Control Act, which is what subdivisions operate under now, Jim. But it's as if it had been created recently. So anytime there's a subdivision, whether it was registered in the county deeds, office in the 1800s, or it was registered last week, like Great Pastures. And remember, I used to own a lot in Great Pastures with Tim a long time ago. So I'm very aware of that subdivision, super aware. Plus I was on the planning board. So here's, here's what it is. If you have a homeowners association, and not every subdivision group has a homeowners association, they have certain things they can and can't do. But even if there is no homeowners association, the layout of all the ways in the subdivision, and it can just be paper roads, it can just be on a map, have to be left open. You can't build on them, you can't block them off, and everybody in the subdivision can use them. But in a sense, you don't own them the same way you might own your driveway. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's why everybody can use them that has a lot in that subdivision, right? So what Jerry registered was the subdivision itself and all the lots in it after it was approved by the planning board, right? You wanna have one piece of land divided into two pieces of land, that's actually also a subdivision, right? And it gets registered in Barnstable, right? So in so, terms of Lieutenant Island- I know, it's- In, in terms of how your opinion on Lieutenant Island, those, what I see as paper roads, those cannot be blocked off. Yeah, and everybody should have access to them. Okay. And remember, it's not just the dirt track. It's the whole width of the way. Dirt track could be eight feet wide, 
the laid out paper road could be 20 feet wide or typically in more modern subdivisions, 40 feet wide, right? And it's a good thing. I mean, you can't put, that's where the setbacks start is at that lot line of the 40 foot wide, not the side of the road, which is actually used. But what yeah. I'm saying here is, if you look at the original subdivision plan for the either one or two subdivisions on Lieutenant Island. I have, I think I, I have I that know. one, 1898 or something like that. The oh, map you have of 1890, that. pardon? Well, is it, it, does it have a whole lot of little lots? Yes, they're all like okay. little tiny things. But, yeah, but that doesn't matter. It exists as a subdivision. And what you need to do is share that with your committee, right? right? And it would have been useful to have it for this and see if any of those lots include a way, a way, a laid out way, oh, right? Yes. Um, for example, I'm gonna give you guys another example and then I'm gonna shut up, but I hope it's useful. And you can well, always tell is, me- uh, This is very, extremely useful in, for, in okay, my terms. For ways. And if I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know, okay? So what I'm telling you right now that I don't know is not looking at the map and not looking at the deed, right? Is, okay, another subdivision, uh, great pastures, okay? Along the side of it, down at the bottom, there's High Toss Road, right? We all know what that is. That's not part of the subdivision. The lot line goes right down to the edge of it. And I know that because Tim and I used to own a lot there. Okay. That went right down to the edge of High Toss Road. And what you need to do is find out if any length of the road that goes to the left when you go over the bridge to go to Lieutenant Island is part of the subdivision, right? Or if it's a way that is not within that original subdivision. And I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the map, but maybe you, do you have a scan of the map? Where'd you get the map? Uh, it was, I found it in old minutes. I don't, I was, I've, okay. I've got to get it so scanned. So if we were all looking at it, we could probably tell right now, but I don't know. Okay, I don't know, I'm not looking at the map, but that's where you need to start. And also, I really would have one of you go to the Registry of Deeds through Nancy Vale, right? And see what they've got. Ask for everything they have for that, for all of, well, all of Lieutenant Island. She gave me, she was great. She did it in 20 minutes. And I have sent you, I haven't sent you the maps yet, Jim, but I'm going to say, you weren't going to do that yet. So I didn't send you the maps the other day. Okay, now I'm going to shut up and stop my video. Thank you very much, Helen. Uh, in terms of, and again, I, if I start the discussion, please get involved and in just, I want to hear what other people say, have to say. I've changed my thinking on this area quite a bit. When I was on the Pond and Coastal Access Committee, when this occurred in 2005, um, we were, in fact, Helen was at the meeting, I have it in the notes, at the, at the uh, hearing public hearing by the Conservation Commission. And it was thought that the lots 170 and 171 and possibly 182 could be used for parking. That uh, when the Audubon went to the uh, get permission to put the rocks there at this meeting, uh, one of the guests, which uh, mentioned, well, we do have, we own lands. And that was the attitude that I had at, at the Pond and Coastal, that we could bypass the Audubon. We didn't need that because there's a road 
a paper road that we, we all witnessed at our site visit. But in looking at those now, of course now this is 15 years later, so much of that land is tidal. Uh, so much of that land is, has this, the beach grass and other things that may, I think, uh, Conscom trumps everything that would prohibit us from ever using that area as a parking area. And now, maybe it's my old age, but when I went out there, and I'm out in this island at least two to three times a week. I love it out there. That's where I spend a lot of time. I would not want any form of any parking uh, in that area. It's beautiful. With the exception of that 159, which is private, but only half of that is high land and it really wouldn't lead itself to a good parking area. The only place that looks like a parking lot is what's owned by the Autobahn. But that's their land. Um, they proposed this, th their purpose on paper, what they presented at that 2005 meeting was that they wanted to have the land revert back to dunes and so forth, its original state. Whether it, it has done that or not, to the amount, to the likings of the Autobahn, that's their decision. They wanted to preserve the land. The town did the exact same thing the Autobahn did. The town said, let's put this, these lots now in the hands of conservation. They did exactly what the Autobahn did, only they did it without a fence. No one can use that land. No one can use the Autobahn land. So it's hard for me to get too upset with the Audubon now, with the fact that they, they wanted to do exactly what the town did. But did they take parking away? Yes. And that's key. We have this beautiful area out there. And that's true of other areas on the island that we know to be the only way we can get from one place and have access for shell fishing. I'll talk about that later but we will, but we need to, it, having that area and not being able to use it, going out there, driving out there, oh, that's beautiful, and not parking and using it. And that's what the town would like, a place to park and enjoy the area. And we lost it. How do we get it back? We're not magicians on this committee. We can't say, in fact, well, we're powerless. But the way I would like to run this committee, once we get this, what we think is as far as we can go, the solution, then I'd like to present this to the selectmen and say, well, we've got, here are three solutions, here are one solution, or this is what we got. But there's no magic here. That's beautiful land and we don't, I don't want to promote any use of that land other than what it is. I look at the Autobahn, it looks like a parking lot. If they would somehow open it up, well, that's going to the solution. That's not what this is all about. That's my feelings of the area. That's my personal feelings. And now we're into this predicament. Helen, your hand is up. Yeah, thank you. Um so my memory, and I remember, and Jim just confirmed, I was looking at this hot mess back in the day, too. Access is not denied to people. Vehicular access onto what the CONSCOM Conservation Commission calls the resource is prohibited. That's all wetland. Right? It doesn't matter if Audubon owns it. It doesn't matter if the town owns it. It doesn't matter if the subdivision people own it. You can't park on it. You can walk over it. And access is allowed there. And my memory, Jim, help me here, because we were there back in the day, and you were really there because you were on the committee. Yeah. 
The compromise, if I remember correctly, was that people could park on the landward side of the bridge and walk across, right? Now, access for shell fishing that way would be a burden because you'd have to walk a really long way, right? And that would be impossible for that. Yeah, it would be, you'd have to get a burrow, okay? Yeah. Yeah, or something. But I really, I really care about, and this comes up at the sluice, which I hope you guys are going to be looking at at some point. Access is permitted. Vehicular access is much more destructive and questionable and parking on resource that is under the jurisdiction of the Conservation Commission, whether or not they're managing it. This just came up at town meeting, remember. In other words, if you give it to the care of the Conservation Commission, it simply means the only difference is they go out and eyeball it once a year, which is actually very good. Otherwise, it doesn't matter who owns it. They have say over people damaging the resource. And what some of you may already know, and what I heard loud and clear from some really good, unnimby, uncreepy people, and I know the difference, at that Homeowners Association meeting two weeks ago on Lieutenant Island, is that this year, because on the internet it says there's free beach access, they have been pounded. They have had people who have nothing to do with Wellfleet simply going, parking all over the Spartina and the resource. And by the way, driving on all the roads on Lieutenant Island, like fast, like sightseeing, like not caring, like throwing litter. And these are not people that live there or even people they rent to. So this, this summer has been particularly bad with it. And the day I went, there were 25 cars there on the grass. And that's not okay if they'd all just walked there and walked onto the beach and the beach was not privately owned. Well, they could, you know, walking on the beach, people, people don't usually care. And there's access. There is access there, Jim. There's just not vehicular access right up to the beach. Ellen, uh, and I want to make sure that I understand you correctly. If the town owned, no, if the Audubon owns that lot 172, which was the parking lot, if they wanted to open it up, the Conservation Commission could shut it down. Is that what you said? No, no. They'd no. have to go to the CONSCOM, Conservation Commission, and they'd have to have a hearing that people, all the butters would be informed butters, about. Butters would be informed. What? What? Oh, dear. Oh, There's dear. an echo. There's just an echo. I'll, I'll just mute somebody right now, and then we'll see if it goes away. Yeah. I, hearing myself twice, I can do without, and so That's can Courtney. Fine now. Yeah, so can Courtney. Courtney listens <laughs> to me. So anyway, um, what I'm saying here is, uh, Conscom already went through this, which is why I'm sorry that, you know, you need to actually, if I were you, uh, committee members, I would invite Hillary to a meeting about this, and she can bring you up to speed in two minutes, okay? Because that a conclusion was reached about that at the time, and it was conditioned. What we have now there is something we should all be concerned about, which is overuse of that area. And how to manage that is one of our great dilemmas here in Wellfleet. We want to be able to share. We want people to be able to get to the water. I'm one of them. I don't live on the water. But at the same time, if you'd seen what I saw the other day, six. Uh, you would have been concerned, I think, every single one of you. And there were two cars crossing over the bridge who told me they were going there because there was free beach access advertised with a way to get to it on the internet. And they were nice people and I was nice to them, but anyway, 
I, I really think I recommend that the first thing you do is find out, meet with the people, Lieutenant Island people about this. I'm glad that Mr. Huss was at that site visit, but it's a real problem. It's a problem all over. Okay, I need to shut up. Thank you. Thank you for answering my question. I did meet by, by the way, by chance. I drove as many roads as I could. I did find and I put X's on where roads are now blocked off, uh, which shouldn't be. Uh, we could spend decades trying to fix this, the island. That's not, we're not gonna get bogged down on Lieutenant Island. This is the main issue. But I also don't want a, us to get involved with something that we can't fix. Uh, if I know that vehicles cannot go back to parking over there, I don't know why I'd be arguing about take the rocks down. My first thing of, of uh, first thing that comes to my mind is, okay, uh, open it up again, see what happens. Uh, I, I don't know if, if this is something that we can solve. Um, the the thing I would say, just to, because Helen did bring up a very interesting point, and this is going to be one of those weird things where, yeah, what is the goal of what we're trying to do? Because you have to look at one, we're a tourist community, uh, especially a place like Lieutenant Island. There's a beautiful area with not a lot of access. I mean, there, yes, you can drive out there if you know where you're going, but there's not a lot of places to park where you're not, in my mind, basically parking in the marsh. I mean, everywhere that we drove, is pretty darn close to being in the marsh in my mind. So having people running up and down those roads, they're going to find them because of Google Maps. Now, where there was listed that there was free beach parking, I don't know. So gone or 20 years ago where you had to know where a spot was to get it. Anybody can find any place in Wellfleet, regardless of whether they live here or not. So with that being said, how do you limit access to people to an area that is essentially public but private? And that's just a general question, not even just for that. Like I was driving down there and I'm going, I never even, I, I don't know the last time I was at that Southwest corner. Uh -huh. I drove down that road and I was like, this place exists in Wellfleet? Just because from growing up in growing up in Wellfleet, I was always like, that's Lieutenant Island, that's private, like I go fishing at the boathouse, and that's it. I don't really, I've never thought of it even as being a public island. And that's a guy who grew up here, you know, so I guess the biggest dilemma I have is no matter what we do, we can do anything we want but there's still the volume of cars that are going to go onto that island in the summer is going to be too much for no matter what anybody says. And that's my fear is at some point, what do we do with that influx of vehicles that's just going to constantly continue to occur? Where do you put them? Do you just say, and you can't be resident only, but it's a very, very complicated issue. Um, I have, you know, I was trying to formulate um, a goal or a vision. Uh, we've all agreed this is a beautiful place. I think it would be um, a great legacy of this committee if we could find a way that this beautiful space would be accessed to citizens and visitors in a responsible way. And I'm, I'm willing to keep plugging. I don't think we should punt yet. I think we should keep plugging away with, to, to try to achieve that vision. 
Um, it's been very helpful, this discussion. Uh, it, it does come down to parking, uh, but almost every beautiful and scenic and recreational part of Wellfleet comes down to parking. Um, Helen's right. You can you can walk all kinds of places and never get a, never get a problem. Uh, cars are difficult, but that's what people do. And that's what we have to respond to. Oh yeah. So well, I'm not I'm not willing to I'm not willing to punt yet. We may find that we spend some we spend some time and don't get anywhere. But I think we should keep pushing at it. I would suggest that in our next. If we could set up, I, I do have a, a request for another site visit, but any of the property that could help us. And the only property that I can see looking at our map, this is, this is kind of the reality. The only lot we have to work with is one we don't own yet. We could own it. We could buy it. Maybe it could be donated. Who knows? That's the only piece of property that we can worry about a car going on safely. Maybe. That's why it's so important to have a member from the conservation committee to perhaps take a walk out there. It doesn't do us any good to say, gee, uh, 159 or whatever, that would look like a potential uh, place that we could put X number of cars. If you look at where Mr. Thayer lives, that's that house on 158, much of his property that in reality we see, a good chunk of it is road, which he has as a driveway. Oh, I'm not, I'm not willing to give up on, on putting parking there. I, I really, it's important for me when I hear from Helen and so forth and, and you folks, we are limited as, and we just have to focus on, okay, what do we have there that we can look at to put some cars there? The more cars we put in, the less maybe on the marsh. That's the only thing we have to shoot for. Uh, there's a possibility, go ahead, Joe. I guess the other thing is what I heard from Bill Huss is that if we if we do nothing, they've still got a big problem, and I I'm inclined to think that they the homeowners at on on the island because they're still going to have cars creating a traffic jam and cars parking in the uh, on the marsh, so I, I that's a sec a second incentive to see if we can help yes. them. I mean, it may not exactly, no, I think it does fall under because we're improving uh, situations. And I, the fellow I did meet up with is Cabot Brown, uh, who is on that committee of the road committee. Uh, he really is crying out for our help. And it was nice. He said, we've got to get this uh, idea of, of the island people don't want people. We just want to maintain what we have and that's why the Audubon is being a very good neighbor. They're very, we're in Wellfleet because we like it. They're in Wellfleet, they're preserving it. That's a good neighbor to have. That lot yes. 159, that's, low, that's owned by an independent, a singular person. That's yes, not, oh, yes. Okay. So the value of the property is assessed at 25,000 okay. assessed value. Now, a part of that, I can tell you, is what, the other half where the 159 is, that goes uphill pretty steeply. Yeah, that's where that hill is around yeah. that point there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I see what you're saying. I just wasn't sure if that was, it's not, so it's in other words, it's not a lot that's owned by the people there where no. if we went to them, it would, we would have to, it would have to be purchased from an individual yes. group on the island, in other words. Correct. Okay. And you look, you see where 11th Street is? Yes, sir. That's, that's a good little chunk of land that is now being used by a driveway. And it's- Yeah, uh, that whole corner where that, where those kind of roads, 11th Street and then whatever that other road that comes 
parallel to the shoreline connects yes. it to that weird little angle there. Yes. Yeah, that's a good amount of land. Yeah. And Audubon may have some, and that's where, when I spoke to Melissa, and, she, and, she, uh, and I was Melissa Lowe, uh, we've got two Melissas, uh, one on our, our committee, that the only way that this thing is going to be successful is it being a joint venture with the town and the Audubon. And I totally agree that uh, it should be joint. And when we have support of, they're not very organized. Uh, this, they, uh, they were, I've been told the Homeowners Association, uh, which is, uh, you know, that it's just the way it is. Uh, but I have a feeling that there is a lot of support. I know a lot of people now on the island from being there all the time. They know my dog and so forth and so on. And they, they would like our help. Uh, they would like our help financially with their roads. That can't happen. Uh, because again, it's not town uh, a road. But uh, I think for today, we've had a good discussion, one of many. Uh, we are nowhere near a decision on anything, uh, but I'd like to carry this on to another meeting and move along. May, may I Any? make some suggestions to add to our agenda list? Yes. Uh, first one is Chipman's Cove. I, I'd like to, I, um, early this week, I looked again at the Irene Payne video and she mentioned that there was uh, a potential opportunity at Chipman's Cove for an additional landing, which might be useful to the shell fishermen. And um, the more I think about it, uh, I, I, I could see a way where we, we might explore that. Um, there are a number of issues at Omaha Beach, Omaha Road. I think we ought to at least be aware of those. And we talked earlier about the Open Space Committee um, and, and the, uh, the Boathouse area. And um, I think if we could find a time where Bruce Herter could join us, uh, that would that would be a very interesting and useful discussion. Which I think they, from what Melissa Yo, is it Yo or Yao? How does she pronounce her last name? I don't know. I try not to say it. That's my way out. Okay. Our Melissa, as it were. Um, yes, our Melissa. That sounds a, that sounds a little patronizing. Uh, but That's true. That's the true. way That's she wrote true. it, it sounds as though that the Open Space Committee would like our input. Yeah, the way from what I read that she said, yeah, they they kind of wanted to probably. And that I think the best way to do that is to get Bruce to join, sit in on a meeting. Right. I mean, a phone call is all all we need. Yeah. Uh, if, right. John, uh, if you you have worked with him, if if you could. Uh, uh, talk to him about our discussion. He could call, would, give me a call. I'd like to talk with him and then we'll go from there. I'll do that. I don't know if we're holding him up. That's the thing. And I don't that's, know how long it would take us. And, and that's stuff we can talk on the phone uh, as to what he'd like. From Melissa's email, I, th I think we are holding them up. They're waiting, they're waiting for some input from us. Well, we've never heard anything about it. For one thing. Well, that's why, that's why we need to have Bruce here. <laughs> Well, I mean, I would, and this is a guess, but I would imagine if they were going to, when they're going to take this to the uh, selectmen, by, the selectmen would say, have you been in contact with the access committee? And uh, I'm just, uh, I don't know that much about it, so I'm not going to discuss it. Yeah. I'll get in touch okay, with Okay, thank you. For, I will add Kipman's uh, Cove guaranteed. Now, we want to work and make site visits other than the island, or do we, as our preference, is to stay on the island issue until we come up with something so we don't lose sight of what... I mean, we don't want to stay on the island forever. 
But if, if we're on there, do we want to devote our next few meetings to exclusively the island until we have a good firm idea of what we want to do? I don't want us to just branch out and kind of forget everything that we're doing on the island. There's yeah. only five of us. In my mind, uh, I would think at least one, just because we're kind of starting, I would like to think we would stick with just the island for a little bit longer because also, like from what I read um, on the Omaha Beach and the information that I saw on that, I watched the whatever the 17 minute video or for, I forget it was, but I did some a little bit of looking at that. And I think from what I'm seeing, it's a lot of the same issues of what we're dealing with now, as far as people have been at, allowed to go there. Now there's access and then it's parking. Where do we put the parking? Is it private? Is it public? What are the, you know, so it seems to me it's a lot of very similar, not all the same, but similar issues that are going to kind of repeat themselves. So I would like to have us, definitely have a consistent plan going forward so i would like to see us get a little farther along i think before we once we start getting it narrowed down then maybe we could follow up and start to discuss something else Unless i would prefer time constraint or something that presents an issue where hey we need to make a decision on this because of x or y i i, I agree with that I would like to turn your attention to the map on 150, plot 152, which was where we spoke to the landowner at lot 154. We packed our cars right in front of her yard. We, were, we are going to lose that access very, very quickly, if not considering it lost right now. I mean, that, that place is underwater. And if I were the homeowner, uh, I'm, I'm talking at a public meeting here, but we're, we're going to lose that. I would like a site visit to 152. Of all my looking at the island, it's the only spot that is going to be safe for the next 50 to 100 years that is not subject to ownership other than the town of Wellfleet. We, there are, that is for shellfish, recreation people, birders, so forth and so on. There's no beach access at this particular site. But that site is the only spot in the entire island that does not have anyone uh, leaning against us, like the Autobahn and so forth, that's owned by the town. And that way is pretty well straightforward, except the end of it. But I would like us as a, as a committee to visit that, and particularly looking at what's there, it's very similar. Uh, the turnaround is there. I don't know if we could use that as a, the way, it's, it's currently there, way 100. If that could be used by the town, actually be anyone else, uh, and not acquire any land from the, or get, get the, not get that land out of trust from the conservation committee. Just work with Way 100, talk to the conservation committee about their ideas in terms of access from the end of that turnaround through the conservation property. It would be on foot. I don't think that violates any of their rules, but that's way down the road. First thing is I would, I would like that to be our next site visit for the purposes of access and see what we think about it. We did not all walk it. John and I walked around it. John was brave. He walked up to where the fence was up there by himself. But uh, that's what I would like for our next site visit. 
which brings me to the point of getting a date and, uh, for our next meeting and our site visit. Uh, what would be a good day to go see that? I'd like to get this while the weather's warm, as many of these things in as possible. Um, I'm pretty much open as long as it's during the daylight and hopefully after work. But I mean, the tide should turn around. So, I mean, I'm, you know, you want to do we it don't next need, We don't need to post that, correct? Site visits. Yes. Yes. Site visits? Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's best to post them. And the other thing is, don't forget, make sure everybody that shows up knows that you can only, you can't deliberate. You can't have a, you can point out information. I gave them, I gave them that information that you, thank you, you sorry. Give, thank yeah, you. I, I put it in, in writing, in writing. Thank you. Thank you. But you should post it. In any case, when you, when do we want to go? Uh, next week. Yeah, any any time next week is fine. Let's look at the sixth right now. Fine for me at the moment. Sixth. And yeah, uh, there's a question of the question of what uh, tide you pick because you 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 want to be on the island. You don't want to be at high tide. No. Uh, but if you're at a low tide, then two of our members are shell fishermen. Uh, I, I would suggest you, you, you talk with Melissa and, and Sonia and find out okay. what, what time suits them. But let's, can we, the three of us agree on the six for that site? And yep. I will talk to them on time. Yeah. I'm trying to see real quick. I can pull up the tide. That's going to be a one, that, that should be a fairly sharp one. We're only going to look at that area but look at it in detail. And in the meantime, well, I don't, I don't want to jump anything. We'll go slow. Uh, just look at it. We can't get in trouble for looking. And then I'll, I'll try, try the week after uh, and see when Bruce is available. Yeah, it looks like Tuesday high tides around three. In the afternoon, three? Yeah, three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, it's a ten so point 10? one, so it's not a massive tide. It's a ten, ten it's foot a ten tide? point one, so it's not. That goes over the road a little bit. Yeah, anything so over nine, we got we, our feet wet. John and I got our feet wet going off the bridge. Oh, you did? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I mean, we could do would like four thirty. Four thirty messes up. Uh, dinner for my family, and it's okay. kind of, it, it's uh, because we wouldn't get back till sit. No, I, that would be not a good time for me. Doesn't mean that we can't have a meeting though, because we can't all make all meetings. I mean, all right. I'd like to, I'll plan on being there. But yeah, I would. I if would we were there at ten and got off the island at eleven, I think we have plenty of time. You see it coming in fast, you know, just scooting around. We're going to be yeah, near the bridge. The only thing, we, I mean, if, if I, I can't make it a 10. That oh, is just, okay. I, yeah, I mean, that's just 10, 10 to 11. I mean, I, if, if everybody else could do it, then I say set it up. If those girls can make it, set it up, and we have to go out and find we'll a go time. out separately, yeah. Yeah, we'll do it, do it that way because if that's going to be – Let me send around what I said I wouldn't do anymore because it drives me nuts is uh, – the, uh, I just will will uh, do it like we did last time. I'll just post, uh, come up with a time and say, how many can go this time? And then we narrow it down. Yeah. We did all right the last time. We had 100% membership. So, all right, we'll give it a try, but the sixth is the day. Now, for a regular meeting, uh, I would like to have it the week of Columbus Day week which is the 12th. At that time, we'll have information on that site 
plus we'll be doing some other work. So we should have that, we should have a meeting the 13th. And how's our tides the 13th with the tide chart there? What are we looking at? I like four is a nice time. Oh yeah, for the afternoon, for the meeting, yeah. yes. My favorite time is eight in the morning, but Jim, uh, I said, uh, I told you guys something wrong. I just looked it up. Although common practice here in Wellfleet is that site visits are posted, right? To be completely transparent. The state doesn't say that you have to post a site visit, but you have to be really precise about never deliberating. Okay, so I was wrong, but May I offer the thought that it's best to post them? Just saying, not legal re required, but like uh, Courtney, I think, you know, like Conscom and stuff and ZBA, they post their site visits. They do Conscom My memory posters. is that I've gone to post. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, I think it's, you can't be accused of not being transparent. Well, it's just the time you know? factor. The whether I get it for well, whether I can get hours. this forty-eight hours ahead. Sure. If I don't have to do it, and it's not a legal thing, if I were to post it Monday, um, it's getting um, the information sense. back from the members. That's the thing. Well, today's Thursday. If you post it tomorrow morning, that's um, not going to happen. I I have to get agreement from from everyone on the time. See, that's my problem. Okay, well, but yeah, I, whatever. I'm, I, I've said my piece. I'm correcting something I told you, which wasn't completely accurate. Okay, okay. so. Thank you. I think, I think, Jim, if you, as soon as you, as, as long as you get it out there. Yeah. Then, you know, but I, I, I agree with Helen. I mean, it would be, I would rather be accused of being too transparent than oh, yeah. accused of I being, want nothing what are you secret. guys doing here? Well, yeah. we're, we're on a meeting, you know, and it just covers everybody's bases, so. I, I yeah, and personally sent, uh, because I want to be, I want the town to be a good neighbor. We're talking to our neighbor, the Audubon, about something. So I sent Melissa Lowe the maps. So I said, this is what we're, this is how we're discussing these are the maps and so forth. No secrets. You know, we, we, we want to be a good neighbor. That's our business. All right, I'm the sixth, how about the 13th for, uh, and what was the time on the 13th, the tide on that one? I'm hoping uh, I didn't see the tide, but I think if we wanted to just keep it the four o'clock meeting, I think we were- I like four o'clock that. meetings. That's fine. Yeah. All right, so unless there's a hue and cry, I'm, I am going to talk to Melissa and Sonia. I like and, a three thirty. I like a three thirty meeting. Okay. Is three thirty infringe on your your work? Thirty three. Two hours out. Two hours past three thirty is five thirty, and we're usually thinking about dinner about five thirty. Yeah, I expected this to be done at five. I really did. Yeah, I'd so, like to. I, mean, I can. I can get to three thirty. That's fine. 3.30 is fine. Yeah. All right, 3.30 to the 13th, unless you hear otherwise. Motion to adjourn. Second. What, what time was it on the 6th, by the way? Four? No, the 6th, you, you guys don't know. 10 o'clock. We think in 10. Okay, 10 question mark. Fair enough. 10 question mark. I will talk I to move the. Uh, I, I move we adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Jim. Thank you, folks. Thanks. Helen, thank you very much for uh, your participation. You helped a lot. Well, Be thank you.